What is up, everyone? Andy here with the Heartland Institute, bringing you more from climaterealism.com. So today, we are going to talk about why the surface temperature record is spotty at best, and it's due to something called urban heat islands. So let's talk about what these are. So we should talk about what urban heat islands are. Now, urban heat islands are areas where temperature is magnified due to human artificial influences. The middle of a city is an example. It'll feel a little warmer in a city than it does in an open open field. But here's the most obvious example, and we've all experienced this, so that's why I'm going to go with it. If you're in the middle of a parking lot, it's black asphalt, and it's it's hot out. You'll notice that it's even hotter in the parking lot. Why is that? Well, this is actually kind of interesting, so we're going to go into the science a little bit. Uh, so black is essentially all of the colors being absorbed and none of them being reflected back into the eye. So visible light is only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum, but black is essentially all of that visible light being absorbed and none of it being reflected back to your eye. Now, white is actually all color in the visible spectrum being reflected back into your eye and hitting all of your eye at once. So white is actually all color. Black is the absence of color. Now, when black substances like asphalt absorb all of the light, some of that energy that is absorbed in the black is actually converted into heat, which slowly radiates out. So it creates this artificial urban heat island or artificial heating that isn't seen when you're in the middle of a field or there's no actual human influence. So that's an example of how human development will create this little artificial heat island that wouldn't be there in nature and can cause misreadings on temperature stations. So this is where we get into the core of the issue. So the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, has built surface temperature stations across the United States. Now in the past, many of these were good, but the issue is human development has expanded and we're now finding that many of these temperature stations are right in the middle of parking lots or in the middle of cities. So we're seeing that these temperature stations show increased temperature readings due to this human influence. So here's a few pictures of a couple just to check them out. Look at this. So this temperature station is found at the University of Arizona, and you can see it's literally in the middle of a parking lot. So as we talked about earlier, there's going to be heat radiating from the ground in that parking lot, which is higher than what the temperature actually is. Here's another temperature station seen at a street corner in Ardmore, Oklahoma. Again, it's right next to a road. We know the temperature reading will be inflated. Okay, so now let's look at something interesting. So my colleague Anthony Watts has gone and actually rated the temperature stations in the United States depending on how reliable they are. And by that, I mean how close are they to parking lots or buildings? Are they compromised? Now, we're going to look at a graph here that shows stations that are compliant, so they're not near these urban heat islands. And then we're going to look at a graph that shows stations that are compromised and how much heating they show. Check this out. So what you're looking at here is temperature trend comparisons for compliant and non-compliant stations. On the top left, we can see class one and two stations, which are compliant. Now, you can see the heating, which is represented by the color and is shown on the legend on the right, is, is present here. And we're not denying that heating has occurred, but it's less than the non-compliant stations. So below the top left, we've got class three, four, and five station temperature readings, which are non-compliant. You can see here that the temperature reading is infinitely higher than it was for the compliant stations. So that's what urban heat islands do. We have these compliant stations and these non-compliant stations. For some reason, we take the data from all of them, mix it, and then call this the official temperature record. Our opinion, or my opinion, is that we should just take temperature from stations that are actually compliant because we know some of them are being influenced unduly. Okay, so back to the map. Now we can see on the right side the official temperature record. So it's way closer to that of the class 3, 4, and 5 non-compliant stations than it is to the compliant stations, and there's a reason for that. Almost 90% of U.S. temperature stations have been compromised by urbanization effects. And almost half of the reported U.S. warming disappears when reporting from only uncorrupted stations. Personally, I think we should stop mixing bad data with good data and just go with good data and stop trying to homogenize it, which literally makes no sense to me. I mean, we know that so many of these temperature stations are compromised. So when they come out and they say it's hotter than ever before, it's like, well, where are these temperatures, where are these temperature readings coming from? And are we using stations that are in the middle of parking lots at the University of Arizona? And the answer is yes. We are using those, which is highly flawed, and I think they know this. Okay, so I just wanted to briefly explain urban heat islands and its effect on the temperature record and show you that much of our data is flawed, and I hope looking at those three graphs of compliant stations and non-compliant stations and the total temperature record was helpful. It's Andy Singer with the Heartland Institute. Subscribe to this page, like, thumbs up. It helps boost the videos. Continue checking these out. We put them out almost every day. Peace.